What's up, H-Town? Got a little bit of change of scenery, change of personnel. Uh, young man, <laughs> Mr. Harrell, has had some whiny boys or something to do with uh, not being able to be here. But it is your man, rodeo man, old man Tim Hanna, live oh in the studio God. with my counterpart. Uh, Jameson Wagner, go Cougs. Jameson Wagner, go Cougs. Thank you all for joining us on this beautiful midweek as uh, we creep into March. Uh, if you now notice, as you've seen from the title, played a couple weeks of baseball. It's been very interesting as we creep into the beginning of the season. I think sure. thus far it's been uh, successful overall. Do we see some room for improvement? Absolutely. Do we see some uh, <laughs> some holes right now while we're trying to build this resume to hopefully host again, which I love hosting? Uh, yes, but I think with that said, you want to jump into it? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get okay. started. Well, so we cracked open the season against Holy Cross, uh, which, as some of you at home may or may not know, they were a, a, a tourney team last year. So yeah. they obviously are, are fairly good. Um, I think they play in like the Patri Patriot League or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I believe you're right on that. It's opening weekend. There's not a lot of uh, reason you should give a lot of credence to those guys. But uh, overall, <laughs> we got the series win. We caught an L on the home opener Friday night, lost three to two. A frustrating we, loss at that cool. too. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, we did lose to, I'm sorry, we did get catch the W on Saturday, bounce back seven to one. And then Sunday we won three to two in the 10th inning. So um, we're going to kind of change it up a little bit for baseball. For those that are familiar with the uh, baseball vernacular, we're going to go three up and three down. Makes it very easy. That way we're not sitting here and, Going super statty, boys, because I could read stats all day long on baseball because I love it. <laughs> I, I, I truthfully do. But uh, I love baseball. I'm going to keep it very right easy. Together. Three up, three down. Three up. I think the first thing that I would like to bring up, uh, pitching. Trey Cumbie comes out, 12 strikeouts on Friday night, but gets the losing effort. Dealing. Are you kidding me? Like I, That hurts. And, and to <laughs> me, I know it's one game and there's 40, 50 some odd in the season, but – so pretty reminiscent from 2017, in, in my opinion. And I, I think, too, when I was walking up to the gate is when they hit that golf club nine-iron home run off the of Cumby, and that Dude. was a one pitch. That that kid probably couldn't have done that again if he tried. He had. And that was the difference in the game right there. And, yeah. And that also goes back to – Kind of like that 2016 feeling that are we going to have the lineup to get us over the hump when it comes to these tight situations and mm -hmm. when these close games and good pitching duels, are we going to line up to, you know, take us to the next level? And I mean, we'll see, but it didn't work out Friday for us. But like I, like you said, there's a lot of new guys in the lineup, uh, a lot of new freshmen in, a lot of guys that never seen college pitching before. Right, and this was right. a regional team a year ago, even though they were off to a really rough start this year. They're only win against a is. The season is against us from that As Friday night. As we speak, night. yeah. They have six, <laughs> lost six straight. So, uh, you know, from there. I, I do have to give, you know, some uh, props up uh, to Fletcher as well. Kid comes out, was always our, our bullpen guy, always our uh, closer, but has his first career start on Saturday. He goes five inning, five inning pitches, sorry, five innings pitched. No earned runs and six strikeouts. So hats off to him. Uh, because yeah, that's a hard tradition, too. So I think this was a role they wanted him to go into, but he had Tommy John. So they wanted to ease him in last year, now yeah. putting him in the starting role. And this is about what you're going to get out of Fletcher, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll gladly take starting pitcher giving us five innings, no earned runs, and six Ks. That's Absolutely. I won't complain about that. But um, that. with that said, let's talk a little bit about the bats uh, for the series. Saturday was kind of a offensive explosion. You know, we had a lot of questions after that three to two. I think we only had less than five hits on the whole uh, night on Friday. We come back, win seven one on Saturday, and score five runs in the sixth inning with Hollis and Lockhart both getting two hits each. So that was encouraging after the first night going. Well, yeah, was our concerns, you know, worth it? <laughs> um, but. 
Uh, lastly, one little thing to uh, do up on a three up for this one. Cold Iron got the first dinger of the year. And Who would have thought that? I would have put money against that. Dude, we, I think we said that uh, in our group text. We were talking. I was like, if you would have told me Cold Iron was going to get the first dinger of the year, I'd owed someone $100. Because No offense, Cold Iron. I know you're going to listen to this. Appreciate you following us sure, on Twitter. I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> but he also gave us the um, – the walk-off single in the bottom of the 10th gave us a series win on Sunday. So very I, I'm very happy with Cold Iron uh, being on the field with us again for a full season now instead of just yeah. uh, instead of just 15 games in one season. But with that said, there is it for every good, there is a bad. I think three things we need to point out on the three down. Friday night jitters. We cannot be setting the tone, especially in conference play. I'm not so no. worried about at a conference and like minimate classes Agreed. this weekend. I'm worried about conference yeah. because if we don't come out and set the tone, we're already playing behind, and it's one thing to have the pitching; it's it's another thing to not have the bats to get you to f- playing behind. Yeah, one. I mean, one hundred percent. And you got Trey Cumbie on the mound, who's literally one of the top pitching prospects in the entire country, by far the best in the American, and is probably a first round, second round guy. Right. And he's going out there. I mean, he was a uh, pitcher of the week. An opening yeah. week of American National play. Pitcher of the Week. Yeah, National Pitcher. <laughs> yeah, and a losing and, effort. And the sad thing is he's pitched two straight uh, – both two Friday night starts have been incredible, and he has no nothing in the one column to show for it. Mm-hmm. And that's that's very, very frustrating. And, and that's kind of what I harken back earlier, you know, even though we had some issues with Seth, Seth uh, later on in the season, it was the same story last year, Friday mm-hmm. night. We could get zero run support, but on Saturday and Sunday, no problem. We were winning yeah. series, but something about Friday night, I don't know if it's mental or what it may be, but um, as we're going to preview next, there's something I, going on on Friday nights. I think it just, you know, last year we had a lot of new hitters in the lineup with, you know, Lockhart, uh, Cold Iron late in the year, um, you know, also some other guys. And I think this year we're looking at the same thing, you know. We have a lot of new freshmen in the lineup. I think that it's a lot of the, it's early in the season, first time seeing you know Division One pitching, and I don't yeah. know. There's just something about like facing an ace from another team. If we're not you know that disciplined at the plate, they're going to get us no matter how good of our Friday night starter starts. Yeah. They're you know duels on the mound, and and then luckily Saturday and Sunday, whenever they're not throwing their ace, we're able to get up there with some confidence. No, I agree. And go ahead and get and take care of business, but you know we'll see. Well, I I will say this. I guess maybe Whitting is telling the guys. We're already down to one. Swing away. Let's go. Let's get aggressive. And and it seems yeah. like that too. Yeah. It seems like we're getting a lot more aggressive at the plate because um, we're still seeing a lot of those first pitch fouls, swing away, hit and runs, things like that. So uh, not too much other on the the rest of the three down. I will say this, Cumbie. Hats off to you if you're if you're listening, and watching. I hope you are. But dude had two bad pitches on Friday night. I mean, it was literally. I, if I'm not mistaken, it was. Lead-off hitter, first or second pitch, gets a single, fine, whatever. The very next pitch, I mean, like you said, guy takes a nine iron and scoops this up and just barely puts it over the outfield wall. So, you know, it, we call it a three down. But if that's, truthfully for Cumbie, if that's the worst thing I have to worry about is two bad pitches, I think we're in good hands. Um, oh, for sure. And I think and lastly – got to score to win, to be yeah, honest. So if you're the first inning – I'm fine with it, but this is this is know. college baseball. This isn't the pros. You you're not going to yeah. win. You're going to have to score points to win these games. Well, I feel like I sound like score runs. <laughs> yeah, same difference. Um, last but not least, I do hate it that for this series we did have to go down to the wire to get the series win. Tenth inning, walk off single by Cold Iron. That doesn't vote a lot of confidence. I'm glad we got the series win, but the confidence level. Looking at what our peers are doing, national rankings, I really hate that we had to go down to the 10th inning to get this win. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, it looks like Saturday. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there Saturday, but we kind of just took care of business on Saturday. And then Sunday was kind of right back to those kind of Friday blues. And we just happened mm-hmm. to, you know, the good thing is, is we did, we early on in the season had an extra inning game and were able to grind one out and get the W. Yeah. Um, so that bodes well for confidence in games like that coming in the future. For sure. So, you know, while Holy Cross, as of right now, they're not – I don't know. who. I mean, you never know. It's too early in the season. But 
Like I said, I think they started one and six now. So yeah. I don't know how much the series is really going to, you know, bode well in the future, as you may say, as far as RPI and all that stuff goes. But at, at the end of the day, it's a series win and we'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So moving on, uh, we were supposed to play Sam Houston to start the Don Sanders Cup, which we unfortunately do not own. Sam Houston has possession of said property, Good unfortunately. <laughs> um, a good team. Yeah, but as everybody knows, uh, last week we had some pretty bad weather. We've had bad weather for like, I feel, two, three weeks now. It's yeah. been the line at Mr. Car Wash for me to get my car washed last week was outrageous. It was bad. <laughs> my, well, I was driving all over South Texas, but that's neither here nor there. So uh, we canceled that game. We're going to make it up on uh, April 17th. Basically, on Tuesday we'll play here. Wednesday we'll play at Sam. Um, Which I think actually bodes better for us. I agree. Begin. I it's almost it, like a mini series. Our, it's a mini series, and we now get the first game at home. Right. I but I also official. Last year I wouldn't have said this, but this year I will. We have the pitching depth. Kyle Ott, love. Or, sorry, Kyle Ott, Bilamovic, Nolan Bond, Carter Henry. Yeah. You know, all these guys have seen extensive Experience. innings. Experience. So, yeah. Right. So I think that bodes better for us. And. Um, It'll give us some more time, I feel like, too, to kind of get our lineup situated with all these new younger guys. Because mm-hmm. you know the lineup's going to change a whole lot before conference starts. Oh, it's already changed. Out. Exactly. Yeah. We're in so game we six kind of and it's already changed. Who, you know, are really our go-to, you know, new guys in the team. Exactly. So, with that being said, uh, let's jump into last weekend series. Huge series. Cal State Fullerton, CWS team last year. Um, yeah. We played at their... I got to say hats off. I did tweet about this. Big West TV, your streaming is legit. In case anybody's watching <laughs> from the West Coast, your streaming is legit. I got a little annoyed that your, your uh, basically your scoring and your little base running, it didn't exactly go well. But I was just happy to have a good HD stream and I could watch all the games. So thank you very God much for that. We're still on like Game Boy quality or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very sensitive subject. VH, I'm, VHS. <laughs> I'm hoping I will see a, an HD stream for a U of H before I retire, but I'm not too hopeful. Um, okay, if Sam Houston has one, that's all I have to say. Like I said, I'm hopeful. That's all I have I'm to hopeful. Say. But uh, ultimately, we did get the series win. We caught the L Friday night, again, lost 2-1. to one. But we did catch the win on Saturday. We bounced back one nine to four, and then Sunday, huge win ten to five. Uh, let's jump into it. Three up, three down. I think, truthfully, for me, I think the biggest thing on on three up, three down is twenty night. I'm sorry, nineteen runs between Saturday and Sunday. Dude, did you did you expect that? Because I I did not expect that. No. On Saturday and Sunday after you losing know, the way we did. What process is? What frustrates me more, though, is how we lost that Friday game. Uh, 15th inning, I think, something like that. Yep. I want to say it was the 15th inning, and it was a it was a wild pitch. Again, we are, like, right in the middle of conference in terms of wild pitches in total. I think we have, like, three or four. Polito has yep. two on his own. Yeah. And I think That's those both were his. Beyond own. frustrating. Yeah. Um, I will say hats off. Drew Minter, the freshman, stud. Went two for six on Friday, two for four on Saturday, but ultimately went 0 for four on Sunday. But, I mean, dude, the guy went four for ten on the weekend on his first away trip as a freshman. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's I'll solid, gladly that's take solid that. outing. I'll take it. I will take it for sure, 100%. And we're going to continue with the trend on, on the batting, but guys that we saw last year in spot duty because maybe they didn't crack the lineup or we were too deep, obviously, because of our power and slugging, yep. but... The boy Fuentes, playing DH in second base, went one for three with the ribby and then three for four on Sunday. And then Etzel comes in as DH on uh, Sunday and goes three for four with the ribby and a dinger. Hey, that is some heads up coaching by Whitting to put these guys, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Etzel was a last minute ad because Hollis, I don't know what happened. Hollis is injured his left or right wrist. I'm not sure which one. but yeah, yeah. He's injured, so Etzel was a last minute ad, and all Etzel does is go three for four and get a dinger. That's good to see that. I mean, he goes three for four, and then Fuentes three for four on Sunday too. So that's, I mean, that's all production right there out of those two guys. Well, Can't ask and, much more six out of eight combined. With yeah. A well, mean, and hell. you know, you and I remember this when we did our 
we did our uh, preview for last year, Fuentes was going to be the stud. He was the DH, the, the DH, our guy coming yeah. in. And I want to say after a weekend and a half, he was batting like one ten or something like that. If uh, I think he'd be lucky to be batting one ten. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what it was. But I, it was remember, I think there. the opening weekend series, he was over for the entire thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so I kind of felt the kid he's a freshman, but I mean, you got to produce, especially in the DH spot. That's your main job. Yeah. So, but luckily, well, can... he's if he's you know he's learned from that and he's matured and looks like he's off to the right track for uh, twenty eighteen so far. I agree, and so. I do like that we have that depth. That that's that's what's oh, very absolutely. encouraging to me. Um, so with that said, let's flip to the three down uh, again. Friday night, Cumbie double digit K's, zero run support. I I don't like this trend. I I know it's only a two game sample, but as of right now, I do not like this trend. So I'm very I'm more so curious to see how our offense does on Friday night on against Kentucky. Oh, against Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, Kentucky. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, this kind of goes back to even last year, though. The, our Friday run support was just very shoddy at times. Mm-hmm. And it's just sad to see when you're going to go up there, Kunde. I mean, Cumbie. Go up there, Kunde. What the hell? Kunde! Kunde! <laughs> no, but Kunde, you know, dealing uh, yet again. And it's just, we, he's got nothing to show for it in the win column, man. Um, yeah. we got to win these Friday night games. I mean, coming down the stretch, that's going to be crucial in conference. It's going to be crucial in postseason. You don't mm-hmm. dig yourself in a hole. And right. uh, we just got to figure it out, man. we got to figure out how to hit these other uh, teams' aces. And I, I think I'm hoping – you know, that as the season goes on, you know, as these younger guys get more reps that, uh, you know, hopefully our, you know, discipline at the plate and, you know, ability to hit some pitches will increase for sure. No, I agree. And I think it's, I think you touched on a good point. I think a lot of it's going to come from confidence because we do have so many new guys. Yeah. We're going to have to build some confidence. And I think some of those guys are a little shaky coming out and that's okay. That's, that's fine. I, I'd, I'd rather get these out now than down the road. Uh, right. while we're in conference so uh two more three down uh hollis injured on sunday i really don't like that a senior leader is injured it kind of sucks right. this early in the season but absolutely the good news is we have depth so hollis we need you at 100 percent. i don't need you out there injured which i mean you remember what happened with vidales when he was injured and he tried to play and he had no bat i, I don't want that again absolutely yeah his, not. his season that we expected a lot from kind of went to I mean, he did the best he could with it, but I mean, absolutely. Mm. So we try to try to avoid that. Would be <laughs> exactly nasty. one last little three down um, errors. Both Sunday games we've had three errors each. Uh, I think I'm going to attribute that to young guys. I don't really know what else to attribute that to, but that's something we need to work on and get figured out before going into conference. I yeah, that doesn't I mean, really sit well with me. It's going to happen early in the season. Yeah. Um, if I mean, if you're giving up, you know, three errors a game coming into the, you know, the thick part of the season, and, and then you know, come late, uh, you know, right before uh, postseason time, then we got a lot of things to worry yeah. about. But you know, hopefully, it'll it'll shake itself out. I got you. Last but not least, just a few little interesting notes from this series. We did shift the batting order around. Uh, Paget now is leading off. Cold Iron got uh, dropped down to the six hole. And Lockhart got on the bump uh, mm-hmm. on Saturday. And I think that was the move to keep Powell Ott's arm fresh. I think there's a rule you have to – you can't throw more than like 15 or 20 pitches and be available for the next day. So I think they wanted Ott to come out for a little bit, mm-hmm. throw his thing, move on to someone else. So hats off to Lockhart being a, a two-way player. That's – you don't really see that. I think the only one that we did last year with was Bilamovic. So – Hats off to Lockhart. I mean, he, only, he went one and a third and only had one walk and, and a K. So that's – I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad about yeah. that. Uh, yeah, and, and another interesting thing that I've, I've found from this series is that our um, our catcher, Tucker Redden, yeah. uh, started Friday night of the um, Cal State Fullerton series. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it looked like he got pinched hit later on as we went deeper into the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Nick Slaughter came and pitched in for him. Then Kyle Lovelace, who's a freshman Lovelace. from Hudson, Texas, boys. Hudson, right there. Texas. You know, I love them East Texas boys. <laughs> uh, so he came in later in the game, but then also continued to catch throughout the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, did fairly well. Um, he did. I know he gunned out two guys. Looks like he's got a killer of an arm, man, for a yeah. freshman. Um, I, you know, Saturday at the plate, it looks like, you know, he went 0 for 4. Um, I mean, that's his first ever collegiate game, really, though. And then uh, on Sunday, he went 1 for 4. Um, but it looks like his defensive work is going to be, you know, a really nice addition. Not saying take anything from, uh, you know, Tucker Reddin. He looked pretty good, too, during that uh, weekend series against Holy Cross. But nice to know we have a little bit more depth back at the catching position, too, with the freshman that could get it done back there behind the plate, for sure. Well, and you got to remember that Connor Wong was put in catcher position because of necessity. We really didn't have anybody last year joe davis could not catch we really didn't have anybody so joe davis is not a division one catcher he is not a division one catcher in the slightest bit no No. not in the slightest bit no um but joe davis is a catcher in 2a texas (laughs) baseball somewhere hey he went to (laughs) he went to Bowie, and Bowie's a 5a if i'm not mistaken maybe a 6a catcher there yeah he was catcher in high school oh god Okay, well, excuse me. We'll stop there. We're gonna we're we're gonna stop there. But look, for the catcher position, all I ask is that no pass balls. I'm just being biased because I know. I I know. I know. (laughs) From what I've seen this year from our our catcher, I'm asking no pass balls. I get it that you get crossed up, but no pass balls and gun out a guy every now and again. I don't even need you to be the guy, the stud. The I don't need you to be Pudge Rodriguez. No pass I mean, balls and gun out a guy every now and again. That's all I'm asking. That, I that, that, that's it. Pudge. Okay. Well, I, I mean, obviously, if Pudge has got some, you know, eligibility. Please bring it on. Who, who is our catcher that is now on the pitching staff? His name, I mean, not pitching staff, coaching staff. His name is losing my mind. Caleb Barker. Caleb Barker is by far Barker. probably the best catcher I've seen since I've been going to U of H for U better of than H. Wong. Wong was pretty damn good last year. Wong was pretty good, but uh, I just think. I can Caleb, see what you're saying because he wasn't like Caleb a pure Parker, catcher. He wasn't a right. pure – Caleb yeah. Parker's presence as a leader and as a catcher is like a Brian McCann for the Astros. Yeah. like okay, a veteran fair. of the game and yeah. is a vocal leader too. That's fair. So I think we've wrapped up the Cal State and the Holy Cross recap. Um, I know it was a little long-winded first of the season. We're going to try and keep it going. So let's roll into conference power rankings. These are going to be a little interesting because – it's even worse than basketball. Everyone does cream puffs and then like one hard weekend <laughs> as of the first two weekends. It's we're playing. We're talking like scraping. Right yeah, it's hard to tell. So these are kind of thrown together. We'll know a lot more next episode. We're in the week four. Well, Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't put it to you, but you can tell the pretenders from the guys are going to be challenging because the ones that are challenging are getting that RPI agree. shots up early. I agree. Just like just like these teams do in basketball season, they go and play in these early tournaments. They go and travel to all these games. Yeah, you got us. You got East Carolina. Uh, you can even throw Tulane in there. UCF. They're all trying to get their swings early on to get some wins over some top programs to go ahead and boost their resume at the end, beginning of the season. So it's kind of like, you take it with a grain of salt. Like these teams that are going in here. Like, like I know we're going to jump into it. Yeah, but, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, before we start ranking them, you got Wichita State that's undefeated at the top of the conference. They've played Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> Little sisters of the <laughs> you know, poor, like uh, Wisconsin yeah. would say. Um, so, yeah, they're getting their wins up. It's kind of like USF last year. Remember when USF was like 20 Oh, and God. Or something? <laughs> yeah, they played every yeah. – literally, if you had a pulse in Florida, <laughs> South Florida played you last year. That's pretty much what happened. Hey, you got a field? You got lights? All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, TSU has better field than some of the teams that South Florida played last year, for the record. Some schools last year that the field of dreams field was a better field than that team. Oh, my God. I know Little Leagues that had better fields than some of the teams that South Florida played last year. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll get on with the chlorophyll. Get on with the chlorophyll. So we're going to start from the bottom. Talk about the bottom three. I think it's very easy going here. Cincinnati at the seven hole. USF at the eight hole. Shocker. Not not a complete shocker, but Memphis at the nine hole. And that's because right now Cincinnati's three and four. South Florida is three and four. And Memphis is three and five. Um, I believe you were talking off air. Uh, th- this was not a shocker. These were all kind of right in the same area. Uh, South Florida lost their head coach. Cincinnati's in her transitioning year, and Memphis has always kind of been in this bottom tier. Yeah, uh, not surprising. Uh, 
I believe Cincinnati was picked as the number nine spot in the preseason right. poll um, at the beginning of the year. Memphis was around there at seven. USF somehow got a first place vote and we're at five, which I don't think is right. But uh, well, Maybe I, someone knows something s- that we don't. I don't know. Maybe they do. Who knows? We're just a bunch of, <laughs> we're just a bunch of two goons with earphones in and a computer. <laughs> Nothing to do on a, win, on a Tuesday night, apparently. <laughs> or Monday night, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? We'll see yeah. how it kind of shakes right now. That's definitely the, the bottom three, I guess, to start with. The next little tier, uh, four hole, Wichita State, five, Yukon, six, Tulane. That's because currently, like we mentioned earlier, Wichita State, six and oh, but who have they played? Yukon yeah. at four and two, and Tulane currently sitting at three and three, but they just got swept by, what was it, Ole Miss or something like that? Yeah, they, so they're coming in, um, like you said, they, they, you know, they swept. To start the the season, and they went into Ole Miss, which is by no means a tough place to go play. And Ole Miss is a solid team, but they got swept there. So as of right now, they'll sit there. We'll kind of see where they kind of go throughout the year. They did lose a lot of senior leadership, yeah. um, but I do believe that's a good program, and it's up and coming. And they're going to give us some fits later on. But for right now, I think that's a solid place for them. No, and I agree. Wichita State, we know they they got a stud. They got a stud that can hit the crap out of a ball. We know they got a stud on the mound. Um, yep. But, you know, we'll see what happens when it comes to playing uh, some top quality opponents. So I think where they are right now is, is good too. Um, and yeah, and I, the rest just kind of speaks for itself. And it is good news for all those uh, following at home. Uh, the third base side, home side, grass area is open, so you will not find. Shock the world uh, having a fight two lane parents this year when they play at U of H. So that's the good news. You won't, we won't have to do a GoFundMe for bail money uh, this year. So we, oh, we didn't need bail money last year. Look, I mean, some of those, those parents got on. pretty feisty with us last year. Hey, they, it was all fun and games until we hit that walk off on them, and then they hated us. So. It's true. Yeah. It's all fun and games until you lose. It's all exactly. fun and games until you lose. But our last year, uh, I forgot your name because of that. If you're listening. <laughs> Lex. Lex. <laughs> oh, Lex. Lex. Hunter, Williams threw Hunter little, and Lex. Hunter Williams threw a little fit like a T-baller on first base, and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Who do you hate like, more, Brad and Chad or Hunter and Lex? I think they go hand in hand. They might as well <laughs> replace it. That, there's not a – if you're having a tag team match in, like, WWF battles, Brad and Chad versus Lex and Lex Hunter. And Hunter. <laughs> Who knows? This is uh, tables, ladders, and chairs on my, uh, it's a, hopefully. <laughs> but the last little quadrant, let's move on with the chlorophyll. Uh, right now, and I think it's very deserved, uh, ECU number one, U of H number two, UCF number three, and that's because uh, ECU six and one just went on the road, spanked that ass of North Carolina, which was number six at the time, sitting at yeah. six and one, U of H four and two, we know where we're at. And uh, Central Florida four and three. So, dude, big road win for the Pirates. Hats off to you. Uh, their fans online are pretty stoked about it. Thank God their football team is abysmal. Their basketball team, God bless their hearts, they just got destri- absolutely destroyed. I actually saw them in the airport. Funny enough, when I was coming back <laughs> from Florida, look at all. I mean, they look like they just got the hell beat out of them, which they because did. because they did. They they <laughs> absolutely did get the hell beat out of but them. But they're like, thank God it's baseball season. But you know what? It's kind of funny. This is the East Carolina team that we thought was going to be here last year. Yeah. Um, agreed. Preseason agreed. Ranked top 10 and just never really came into play. So big, huge road win for them. No, um, I completely UC- agree. I completely yeah. agree. UCF is, they're going to be solid this year too. Uh, Coach Lovelady's still there. So that's, I think it was very important. They hold on to Coach Lovelady. So, yeah. I mean, they've I'm- had a, so open the year. They had a great win over number 15, Virginia. Uh, yeah. They did lose their price by a run. And then, you know, they've, they've taken a couple of other L's and then it's got a series sweep against Vanna State. Not much to say there, but, you know, they're going to be a good team. And then yeah. you got us with two series wins now yeah. um, at four and two. So Look, series shabby. wins, it's funny. It's like, a, it's like a Drake song. Series wins over everything. I'll take a series win over any okay. midweek game or anything like that. So I think yeah. the respect – give. Especially one on the road and one uh, at home. I think you have to give respect where respect is due. Midway games are crapshoots, man. The only thing it kind of hurts you is, is like you know, which we will get into later, like this week with Texas Southern. You drop that game, it hurts you. Yeah. You win it, it does nothing for you. It's just it's a it's a schedule filler. 
essentially. Unless, like with Sam Houston, though, is a good RPI filler for us, and it's good for them as well. It's beneficial to both teams. I think our – As long as get swept, it's good. Midweek but, games are good for the end of the year when you're trying to get that last little you exactly. know, RPI or two move. Exactly. Um, but – Outside of that, I mean, it's a crap. It does shoot. nothing for you. No, I completely agree. So, burn arms. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, we're going to preview the next two weeks. Uh, but first, I do want to talk about a couple of statty boys. I think everybody that follows the podcast knows that I love finding out random stats that you can throw in your stupid Aggie friend's face, which they're really good at basketball or baseball this year. Not so much at basketball. Um, they were and, they were the top ten at one point. God yeah, and they nose dive in basketball, kind of like they did in football. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, I'm not lying. We're not being biased here. But hey, come November, Aggies are screwed in football. Everyone in the country knows that. <laughs> oh look, look, Aggie, Aggie, hi, pipe, 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 pipe. Oh God, that's, that's <laughs> oh, God. exactly what happens. Like um, the roller coaster. Pretty much. If you uh, if anybody follows. Prevalent Ride. He he's a blog guy from Texas. He does he loves MS Paint. Hashtag rip MS Paint. Uh, you should follow him. You should follow him because he's had some pretty good ones. Yeah. But it's not safe for work. Just FYI. So, with that being said, a couple quick statty boys. I think everyone kind of gets this general feeling. Our pitching is on, and the the offense is not. So when you look in in terms of national statty boys. We're number 15 in the nation in ERA, and that includes Trey, who does not have a good ERA because of his first outing, which mm-hmm. I hate because it was two pitches. Even with yeah. that, we're still 15 in the nation in ERA, uh, number 10 in whip, number 16 in hits allowed per nine, and 17 in walks allowed per nine. And I know one of the big questions was this year is, can we continue the same steam you know, full steam ahead that we had with Coach Anderson. And as of right now, I'm not really seeing a big drop-off in between last year's team and this year's team with Coach Rooney. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing on that, too, is is I looked, a lot of UCF pitchers that are juniors and seniors got a lot of accolades uh, preseason. And that's when Rooney was there recruiting mm-hmm. them and being the head coach. Uh, yep. And if you look, I mean, the guy knows his pitching. And quite frankly, I really don't think we're gonna, I don't think we're going to skip a beat. Uh, no. To be completely honest, so for two weekends we haven't. So we haven't, we haven't. And like I think you mentioned uh, off air, you went to the preseason dugout club meeting and you spoke to several pitchers that he's been working with them a lot on developing other pitches and stuff. So I mean, hell, seems like we're doing just fine. No, I agree. I don't think there's been any drop off in it. And as of right now, I'm. I think as of right now, I'm more confident in our pitching than I was this time last year. Yeah, and I think it's because the depth and the amount of arms that we have and the variety of arms we have. If we mm-hmm. have our three starters, I like Randall's as a starter. He got a little bit of, he got dinged up a little bit on Sunday, but that's okay. Cause Cal State Fullerton is going to be a good hitting team, but I like that. We have a solid bullpen. I'm sorry, solid bullpen and a solid closing staff. Last year, you and I both had serious issues with the bullpen. It was like, yeah, great. We got a lead. Let's hope to God our bats can wake up because yeah. we're not going to be able to maintain this lead. So and it and it was like we needed our starters to at least go five or six. To at least, w. yeah, at least. End if we got, the, if end we of got the taken sixth. out in the second or third, we were in some. We were in a deep hole. We were in doo doo, baby. <laughs> I mean, we are anyways, but with our oh, depth, we were really deep. I agree. So to flip that into conference, and when I say conference standings, I mean everyone has played in the conference. This is where they stack up. Uh, not like just conference games. So currently right now we are number two in the conference with uh, a 1.94 ERA, which I think is badass. I want to yep. say ECU or something like that is, is above us. Um, which is incredible. We are, they at North they're pretty Carolina. bad last year. Um, <laughs> at North Carolina. We are number one in opposing batting average with a 192. That is that's pretty sick. Which is no joke considering both opponents have been – uh, postseason teams last year. Cal State's got bats and Holy Cross has got bats. I mean, number two guy yeah. took us yard Friday night, so obviously they have sticks. But um, we are number two in strikeouts. We got 76. We're number one in hits allowed with only 41, which is like a couple ahead of the number two team. I found this very interesting. Batting average versus righties, 
like as in us pitching and the yep. righty and then the the batting average versus right-handed hitters, 154. Pretty good. That's pretty damn bad. Consider I'm pretty damn badass considering uh yep. most teams have right-handed hitters. So mm-hmm. I I really really like that. Uh and then our one positive shining light on our offense, Lyle Lockhart is number 8 in conference with a 452 on-base percentage. So I really do and it goes I, to show me that's why it's not a four hole. Yeah. Well, I, I completely agree. I don't think he is a four hole. We need our one through three guys to be getting being up there in conference and OVP. And, I don't need my four hole necessarily and, doing that for me. I mean it's great, but I need my one through few guys doing that before he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. I want one through three on OVP high. I want my I want my four, five, and six guys slugging percentage yeah. whew, way up high. So oh, absolutely. These are all stats. Take them home, share them with your friends, your eggy <laughs> friends, and your Longhorns. Which, by the way, you can bust your Longhorn friends' balls because uh, the LSU guy had like a it was like a Sunday game, and he got a hit, and he like flipped, flipped off the pitcher as he ran, which is bad sportsmanship. But it's UT, I've heard so they deserve it. About that though, I heard like they were friends. He had kids from Texas, and they played on the same like. Uh, showcase team, so they knew each other. Then I also yeah. read that that pitcher was like. You know, trying to be Mr. Boss Hog, we got someone out and was going back to the dugout mouth and here and there. So I don't know what to believe anymore. Look, you, you're you know it. Your brother knows it. All of us guys that have played baseball, baseball players can be douchebags. It's it's a simple oh. fact of the game. Oh, dude, it's the biggest d bag game sport there really is. To be oh, honest, absolutely, absolutely. So it's the only sport it, you can pop Chang out of your jersey. <laughs> Or wear a half button shirt, not calling any names. Or wear a half button shirt, like excuse yeah, me, sir. Guys that do that. Yeah, we've got a few yeah, guys that do that. But that's, you know, again, again, it's baseball. That's what they do. But if it works, don't fix it. Don't mess don't with care. it. Just let it be. Just one so, of the games. With that said, you got the Saddy Boys. Let's talk about the preview. We're gonna zip through the Houston College Classic. Talk about our midweek games next week, and also preview San Diego. But task at hand. This weekend, we're finally back in the Houston College Classic. We got rid of the Whataburger, and we said we're back in H-Town. We open up Friday, 3.30 p.m. versus number 8 Kentucky, which comes in at 7-1. These boys are serious, okay? I'm just going to tell you this right now. Yeah, they're 7 they were one. Right there last year. They lost their home opener to Xavier 2-3, to three, but they played Oakland in a weekend series last weekend. And won by a combined forty-two to thirteen. Okay, it's also Oakland, but it's, it's Oakland, but bats. but that's, that's bad. That's bad. You don't score forty-two runs in three games and not have some serious offensive weaponry. But we're likely going to see the two thousand seventeen SEC Pitcher of the Year, Sean Jelly. It's got an H in front of it. I don't know why, but it's kind of like a Hilgy. Hilgy. <laughs> that's that's what I thought too when I first saw. It. When but, I saw, it, I was like, oh, Hilgy. Hilgy. Hilgy jerky. jerky. It's our favorite stop when we're going down to Rockport. But um, kid comes in this year right now. He's only had two starts. 0.66 ERA with 16 Ks on the year. I want to say he's pitched like maybe 10, 11 innings. This kid means business. So I'm very curious to see how we handle this guy. Um, And then last little point, preseason All-American Tristan Pompey. Uh, currently batting a 476, and he's a switch hitter with a 762 slugging percentage. So that's what we have to bat or have to handle on Friday. I this would be a tough test, my friend. Well, tough, we'll tough, tough have, test. We'll have Cumbie on the mound for that one. That's the that's the uh, middle game of the day too on Friday, I believe. That is the accurate. The 30 game. That's a 330 game. 330 okay. game. Yeah. It'll be interesting, man. Uh, they're a good team, and like we were kind of talking off air, like. Uh, these tournaments are you, you take them with a grain of salt they're not it doesn't hurt you in conference uh it does help in rpi i guess you could say later in the year of who you've you know who you've matched up against so i think it just mm-hmm. really kind of gives the coaching staff and the players themselves kind of what they're made of and what we're going to deal with the rest of the year kind of what we, what we've got when we go into i mean some top quality i mean kentucky's top 10 in the country Bandy's sure. top 15, uh, Mississippi State's top 25. I mean, this is some yep. serious, you know, serious competition we're going up against here. So, I mean, it's time to shine, boys. See what you're made of, this young team. Well, I think we'll know a lot after 
this weekend about what we have going into the year? I think for this weekend, um, <clears throat> you and I talked about this in our in our chat. We obviously we're playing TSU during this midweek. This is a pretty tough slate. I think if we go two and two, I'll be happy. If we go three and one, I'll be ecstatic. Yeah, I find it very hard. We're going to go four and zero oh, mm-hmm. unless unless our bats click on Friday. Unless we just well, play loose and free on Friday. Well, some quick notes on that. Since Todd Winning has been at the helm at U of H, and we've been in the College Classic, we've been there every year except for last year, whenever they decided to go right. all Big Twelve. SEC. (laughs) That's all that was. So anyways, uh, over the course of our six years of of winning, being a coach for the College Classic, our combined record is 7-11. and With our worst year coming off in 2016, which we did not make a regional that year, we went 0-3 in the Classic. Yeah. Uh, um, The best we've done is 2-1, and that was in 2012 and 2013 back-to-back. Yep. So my goal for the team for the college class was let's, let's just get to two and one, and yeah. I believe if, which the game we're going to talk about next against Mitsubishi State is probably our most is our best chance by far out of those opponents to get a W. No, I agree. And so the next game after Friday on Saturday we play at seven p.m. primetime game against Mississippi State, and for those that don't know, uh, their head coach Anthony Canizaro was just fired for well, let's just say. Impermissible, impermissible benefits and using money in ways he should not with certain females who are not his wife. Ooh, I look, I'm oh. not going to get any slander, but uh, he's not there anymore. So they lost, they have lost their head Shame. coach. Shame. Shame. Yeah, Shame. yeah he's going to have to atone for a couple <laughs> sins after this one. Um, but they do have uh, the uh, associate head coach step up. They got swept by Southern Miss to start the season. But it's with not that terrible, said, it's yeah, pretty good. But it still looks kind of like ugh. Mississippi State has been good for how many years? I mean, they've been a constant, yeah. constant regional, if not super, if not CWS team for I don't know how long. Truth be told, um, we're likely going to see Ethan Small, which has been their Saturday eight guy for the last two weekends. He is coming off energy injury, but he's got 14 Ks and 10 innings pitched uh, with a 4.5 ERA. Opponents are batting at 311. And so, like you mentioned, this could be a game that we could win. If we play like we have been playing, you yeah. know, this might be one of those. Considering you got steal. Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, I mean, you look at this and you're like, okay, we should, I mean, if you had to pick one you feel comfortable with out of the three, I'd definitely pick this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, our Sunday game, we play at six o'clock against Vanderbilt. They're seven and one, number 13 currently. They've knocked off Duke. Presbyterian and UMass Lowell, so they're not exactly world beaters. Um, they didn't sweep. I know they didn't sweep Duke. Uh, I guess no, they didn't. No, no, I just had knocked off. They didn't. They didn't sweep them. They just knocked them. No, off. no. I was just you know trying to figure out that one loss was, and I remember it was Duke. Correct. Um, we are probably uh, going to see Chandler Day, junior right hand pitcher, three point ERA, twelve strikeouts, and uh, opposing batting average is one eighty two. Um, they have a Golden Spikes winner in Julian Infant, Infante, Infante, Infante way, Infante, Infante way. Um, yeah. but I'm gonna say this: he's batting a 037 right now with 10 strikeouts, and I don't mean he's a pitcher. He has 10 <laughs> strikeouts as a batter. So I'm not sure. The, Austin Martin is actually their their current leading batter. He's got he's batting at 591. With an 818 slugging percentage and a dinger, it's pretty damn good for two weekends. Pretty stout. Pretty stout. Um, but like you were saying, like we just mentioned a second ago, I think right here, Saturday and Sunday are games that we can steal against uh, against some quality SEC teams. Truth be told. Oh. Well, hell, I mean, if we could give Cumbie some run support, we'll probably still one on Friday. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, these games are they're kind of hard to look back on. I remember, I think one of our worst years we ever did in the College Classic. If I'm not mistaken, um, came the year that we went all the way to a super regional. Yeah. So, I agree. <laughs> I, exactly. What was it? it? Or, okay, well, we went one and two, but yeah, I mean, but I didn't It's really funny because, there you know, and we're, so basketball is one thing to have so many variables. There are so many more variables in baseball to try and project and figure out who's going to do what. 
it's really tough. All you can do is project. And right now, gun to my head, I think this weekend we go two and two. Or this whole week, including TSU tonight. I'm sorry, yes, sir. Um, I think we go two and two on the whole week. What do, what do you think we're going to go on the whole week? Including the Tuesday night game against yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Texas yeah. Southern? Yeah. I'd be happy. If, I kind of agree with you just earlier. Uh, two and two would be fantastic. Three and one would be okay. Yeah. We can, we're going to ex- exceed my expectations possibly for, for the year. Even though we are preseason ranked to win the conference, I. Uh, These are uh, stout teams. These are really stout team com- coming I know, in. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I just need to see. I need to see more from our lineup, um, especially on Fridays. Season. Especially on Fridays. Yeah, I know it's early in the year, but yeah, a three and one would be absolutely phenomenal. If we go four and zero, like let's pop the champagne. We're going to see four and zero. I'm going. <laughs> maybe I'll be kind of free in June in Houston. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> So, with that said, uh, we've recap, we're, we previewed uh, this whole week because we're doing this every other week. Because, well, guys, we're not going to bore you with baseball; it's all stats. Um, we're going to talk about next midweek games and then the weekend, and then we'll sign you off. So, with that being said, uh, next week three six, which is a Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, something like that. Uh, we host Houston Baptist. Uh, they have lost a series against Baylor. And lost three out of four against Fresno State. We'll probably see this guy named Brady Batten. He's pitched a whole whop in six innings with two earned runs and six Ks. A leadoff hitter, sorry, their leading batter, center fielder Jonathan Dukoff, which is a Baylor transfer as well. So hopefully, like Kyle Ott gets in there and strokes his ass out. I, I think that'd be pretty funny. But yeah, we uh, owe them some revenge from last year, too, man. I know, and the year before from playing is pretty close. Um, he's a uh, he's batting 300 with a 400 slugging percentage. So again, a lot of midweek games are going to be must wins because the RPRs are terrible. Yeah, especially not being away. We're going to get bonus points for winning away. It's a must win. I mean, there's really mm-hmm. not a whole lot to preview on that. Um, and then the next day we play McNeese State, which Right now, McNeese State is one in six. Um, we're going to play them twice this year, but McNeese State was whooping ass in the Southern Con- Southland Conference last year. They were really, really good last they year. They were. They're a pretty good team, dude. We almost lost last year when I went to that game. Um, well, yeah, the midweek game over there. Yeah, they're that, they're uh, their uh, their second baseman like uh, set the school record for stealing bases. So they have some scrappy guys. They've always been scrappy. That's how. That's the kind of players they're. Louisiana. Recruiting. I mean, it's just like Texas, man. All these teams are gonna be pretty good. I agree. I agree. Um, they lost three straight straight to Wichita State, which I find this interesting because this is kind of gonna be a slight barometer of how we're gonna fit in uh, this year. <clears throat> Left fielder Shane Selman bats currently at three seventy four with but four dingers and a nine fifty eight slugging percentage. Boy's got a stick on him. That's pretty uh, ridiculous, but uh, we'll likely see Adam Gorey. I don't, probably not. I, I'm not sure. He went an inning and two thirds and gave up five earned runs last week, midweek game. So, not not sure who we'll see. But again, we'll same see thing. What happens. Yeah, it's a midweek game. Um, with that said, next weekend we will host San Diego, not San Diego State. I made terrible notes. I think I was a little tired last night when I was typing up these notes. US, this USD. USD. Um, currently right now, they sit 5-2. and two. They were tabbed to finish second in the West Coast Conference, which is right behind BYU. They split Cal games and split Cincinnati games, which I find interesting because, again, I like to see these barometers early in the season uh, of kind of where we stand. You know, it's kind of hard to say, well, we won the series against Holy Cross. Well, mm-hmm. who's Holy Cross? They did win four straight in, I think it's the Tony Gwynn Classic or something like that, against Mm -hmm. Meat Chicken, Grand Canyon, number four Arkansas, and Arizona. So tell you what, those wins over Arkansas and Zona, that's that's pretty solid. That's pretty stout, my friend. Pretty stout. You know, taking one away from Cal is pretty good, too. So they're not a bad bunch, man. I'm telling you. No. No, USD is not a bad bunch. No, and, and, and I think it, it can be a slouch. I'm glad it's at home. Um, 
I'd be very leery playing another California team um, on the road. But probable pitchers we're going to see, their Friday night guy, is a, he's a stud. Junior right-handed pitcher, Paul uh, Rakan, .061 ERA with 21 strikeouts. That's... It's pretty impressive. It's pretty solid. For a Friday night guy. That's dude, now. Yeah, it's not bad. That dude throws some heat. Uh, we'll likely see Chris Murphy on Saturday. Got a 9-0 ERA. It's pretty bad. Might change. Yeah. You never know. You, yeah. yeah. We, it's, that's two weeks. It's a week and a half away from right now. And then uh, Sunday, junior left-handed pitcher Nick Springle. 6-7-5 ERA with four innings pitched. Not really sure. Again, it's hard right now because... You've played so few games, so you don't really know who's going where. But uh, three guys you do need to know. Leadoff hitter. I'm sorry, leadoff hitter, but leading batter. Tora. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to butcher this. Otsuka. 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 I think it stands for an old wooden ship. Or Otsuka. Otsuka way. <laughs> uh, he's batting at 444 with 16 oh hits. God. Kevin Collard, uh, the number two, 368, and Daniel Gardner at 344. So it's kind of hard to project right now, but I think as we stand, if we go two and two on that week, and with this, I really would like to see, what is that, four and one. I'd really like to see four and one for next week. Oh, for HBU, McNeese. Yes, and then well, three be, San Diego Well, that'd be games. five, yeah, four and one. Four and so one, that's So, wins saying. over Houston Baptist, McNeese to sweep house in midweek and then take two out of three against San Diego. I'd be yeah. happy with that. Yeah, I'd be happy with that too. And and a lot of this is to maintain ranking, and truthfully, some of these teams have played our conference mates. So, again, it kind of gives us a feeling of kind of where we stand, you know? Yeah. And there, there's some people on, you know, D1 baseball boards that are calling for, hey, where is University of San Diego in the rankings? Like, yeah. where are they at? I mean, I mean, they're they're right there on the cusp too. So this is no other, you know, easy slouch. Look, you so, don't win four on the road against opponents. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what was, exactly what I was just gonna say. You don't win four on the road against Michigan, Grand Canyon, ranked Arkansas, and Arizona, which is always a good squad. Like, exactly. if you're not a good squad. So yeah, they they swept that Tony Gwynn tournament. So exactly, that's off to them. Yeah. So I don't know. With that said, I like where we're at. A little bit more offensive production, just a little bit, especially on Friday nights. Uh, my final thoughts are: love the pitching thus far. Bats need a little bit of help, um, but thus far, I'm pleasantly surprised of how well this year is going thus far. Your so, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I kind of am too. I remember, uh, you know, the Friday night game of Holy Cross. I think me, you, and another fellow were sitting there. We were talking like, I just hope we can win one against Cal State Fullerton. Mm-hmm. But not knowing they've also had their struggles too. So, I mean, hey, to be four and two right now, uh, I'll, I, anyone would take that to begin the year. Um, but I'm looking forward to just being back in the college classic, to be honest. That was the first time for yeah. me to even be introduced into U of H baseball. Mm-hmm. back when I was, I don't even know, just a, a youngin. I think that when they first started it. But I remember going to U of H game. I forget who they played. But they knocked the absolute socks on somebody. And that's where I got my first U of H baseball hat. Then we started going. <laughs> I'm getting serious, man. Like, I was like, okay, because, you know, growing up, well, not really growing up, but, you know, it was, I followed, like, you know, Texas Rice. And then we went there, saw U of H, and I was like, oh, okay. And I started making my parents go to U of H games, you know, from mm-hmm. then on. U of H was killer in this. Or it was like that 2003 time and stuff like that. So so that was right after, like, the Brad Lincoln. Oh, two. That was, like, right after, yeah. yeah. We were stud. Like, U of H was studly back then. Um, I mean, we are now. We're getting back to those era, that yeah. era now. No, and, and, and truth I mean, be told. We're there, really. Yeah, I mean, truth be told, like, we've had a really good run the last four years of yeah. winning. Yeah, no, we we really and truly have. Um, no. So if you guys got kids, or if you don't come out to Cougar Park that much, take them to go to the College Classic, man, and you get to see a you're going to see some real quality baseball this weekend. Uh, probably some of the best quality baseball caught in the college level that you're going to see in the state all year at, uh, combined in one weekend, and that's even with super regionals and regionals. Um, cause these guys are going to be playing in super regionals and regionals all over the country when it comes that time later in the year. 
So take your kids out to the ballpark, get them introduced some college baseball, Cougar baseball at that. Uh, and they'll have a blast. And no, I'm just looking I forward agree. to it, man. Can't wait. And also, <laughs> I'm just glad we're back. <laughs> me too. And also, if you can't make the game, I saw online where all the games are going to be on what is now the ATT Sports Network, which replaced Root. Oh, oh Root. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It replaced Root at the end of last year. Like midway through the Astro season, it replaced it. So all those games are going to be aired. Uh, I think our game versus Kentucky is the only one that's going to be on Root Sports or Root Sports, ATT Sports <laughs> Network 2, yeah. if you have that channel. And then the rest are going to uh, Mississippi State and Vanderbilt. We're on the main network channel Saturday and Sunday. Nice. Nice. Yep. Well, with that being said, we're going to wrap it up here. We've been squawking about baseball and throwing so much stats at you boys. So we appreciate y'all listening. As always, you can always catch us on Twitter. Uh, shock the world pot it's stw podcast yep. we're always on there engaging fans instagram stw podcast uh you can catch us on facebook as well uh shock the world pc i'm sorry twitter is shock the world pc instagram is shock the world pc facebook is shock the world facebook.com slash shock the world so one yeah. three. <laughs> don't worry harold's gonna harold's gonna beat me because i don't know these off the top of my head i'm just already <laughs> preloaded and everything but if you like the video, give us a like, hit a subscribe, send it to a friend. If you tell, if you think we're sucking at baseball stats, let us know. I'm happy to banter with somebody, but chances are you're probably going to be wrong. So Throw some comments. Yeah, we love comments. I love seeing comments. I think it's really cool. And Dr. Von Doom, you've been a trooper. You've been listening every single episode as long as all the way through. But uh, keep us a uh, watch out. Next week, we'll be talking about basketball. And with that being said, that's all I got. That's all I got. Look forward to seeing all what right. I'm made this weekend. See you on Friday. Go right, Cougs. Go Cougs. Row, row, row. Oh, my God. Later. Later. Later.